Hey everyone, my name is Ben Cheish, and today I wanna to talk about the video functionality on the Fujifilm X-E4. This little camera is actually pretty fantastic for video. The thing that people aren't gonna like about it is the fact that it doesn't have in-body image stabilization, which for something this small, like, I mean, I don't really fault them for not having it, especially since they released the XS10, which is a body that's similar to this with a few more features that also does include in-body image stabilization. But in terms of codecs, it shoots 4K video and it looks amazing. It shoots at high frame rates in HD at 1080. It shoots 120 that looks pretty good for, for my taste at least. The 240 is more of like a it's not a gimmick, but I wouldn't necessarily use it as that great of a tool. But clearly with the way that the screen is built, it's meant to be used as a video camera as well as a still photography camera. And for the price point, you're getting a pretty killer little setup here. So especially if you're someone that is at all considering using this camera for just like a talking head thing like I'm doing now, and not doing a ton of movement outside of like a gimbal or whatever, I think this camera would do pretty well for you. I know a lot of people have even asked me about just the webcam use of it, which is also a pretty sweet spot. But one of the things I wanted to do was test this thing out, see how it fits, and especially try it out with the 18 millimeter F2, which is one of their earliest lenses and one of their most inexpensive lenses. I picked up a copy for about $250, which fits the body really well in terms of both like the styling and the size. So having something that's wide enough to use as a tighter uh, kind of vlogging setup, like someone with longer arms like me could probably do that well. So I'm gonna take this outside, see how well it fares in kind of real world walk around vlogging type of scenarios. So you guys can mock me in the comments below for doing a vlogging test, but I think this will be really useful to see how it kind of fares. All right, so gonna go out and do a quick little vlogging test. I do have a ND filter from Freewell. They have these little magnetic things. Uh, I'm also wearing a GoPro as it's not a bow tie. It's a bow tie GoPro, but it's essentially sunglasses for your camera. I also have the Rode VideoMic NTG on the side on this little clip here. So in case anybody's interested, I'll kind of link that stuff below as well. But you know, it's already pretty bright. And then once we go outside, if I wanna keep that F2 aperture and then keep my shutter speed at 1 48th of a second, I'm gonna need this even though it's raining. So we're gonna try this real quick, go out and do a, very miserable pouring down rain vlogging test on the Fujifilm X-E4. So here we go. What? Yeah, you can see it's pretty jittery. Every time I take a step, it kind of lit, lit, lit. So that's where the Ibis would definitely come in handy. But the color and everything looks really, really good. But my wonder here is if it's too shaky. And I wonder if you can do like this too much. I think the 18 millimeter is actually doing better than I thought it was going to. So yeah, looks pretty good. All right, we're gonna run in. I'm gonna grab the Moment Cinebloom filter real quick and we'll try this one more time. But this is the part right here where it's all just bouncy that I'm most worried about especially at, there we go. All right. All right, now we're gonna do another test with the Cinebloom, so you can see a little bit of these highlights. And then again, if this is uh, miserable because there's no image stabilization and it's at essentially 28 millimeters, at least we know. Haze, that looks pretty good. I really do, between the two, if you guys haven't watched the Cinebloom video, I think the 20% would be cool, but the 10% is just like, feels like it works better for a lot more situations. And this is actually doing pretty good too, in terms of 
keeping a good exposure because I'm just doing auto white balance. So yeah. All right, let me know what you think. So I wanna do a couple quick little video tests. How does this look in comparison to my normal thing? It is interesting because I'm used to looking sort of to the side, but now I can see myself over there and it's doing a good job of kind of tracking between my two eyes. The other thing about this is, you know, this is shooting in 4K. And again, this is the older Fujifilm 18 millimeter F2. So it's a little bit tighter than my typical 24 millimeter perspective. This is a 28, so again, a little bit tighter, but I think it still works well for this. And I was anticipating it being loud with kind of its rack focusing, but it feels like it's been doing pretty well. So let's see here. Right here, yeah. You know, it's, it's tracking me pretty well through all this stuff. So let me know what you think as a kind of like talking head camera. Does this work well? Uh, I've also tossed the 10% Moment Cinebloom filter on there, so you might be able to see that in here, as well as just kind of get that softer look that I've been going for in these. So I usually do that on my EOS R, so I figured I would also kind of double that onto there as well, just for the sake of consistency. So what did you think about this setup? I honestly think for a YouTube type thing like this, the camera does really, really well. It gives you the availability to use Eterna and you could shoot log if you wanted to. And especially it has the ability to shoot into one of those Atmos Ninja 5s or Atomos or whatever that company is called. Um, and you can get 10 bit 422 out of this, which would be amazing and uh, a lot cleaner when you're using a log format. And for the size and everything like that, I know a few of my video centric friends that already use Fujifilm cameras are talking about buying these for some like more B and C cams because it has the same sensor as their X-T4s that that a lot of people are using successfully. But if you're just gonna stick this thing on a tripod, you know, in the back of a ceremony for a wedding or maybe a wide shot for a corporate gig, something like that, it honestly works really, really well for that kind of stuff. And again, at the price point, definitely something to consider. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. I will try to do more testing if you'd like, but until then you can check out my original video on the X-T4 here. And then if you wanna look into more of the Fujifilm reviews I've done, you can check them out here.